Hi, have a shamams. Uh, my name is Arhana Ze Avroch. Um, I'm a licensed professional counselor uh, based in Atlanta, Georgia at this time. I was in St. Louis, Missouri. Some of you might know me from Facebook Live or YouTube um, talking about uh, my autism journey with my uh, daughter, Grace, a five and a half years old daughter, Grace, and um, also just as a professional uh, mental health professional doing psychoeducation with the Habesha community on Facebook Live. Um, I wanted to thank you at uh, uh, Sarak Abdurhan, I think, for posting today the statistics about uh, the autism in, uh, in the East Africa community. I think, um, I believe, um, Leah has. Um, posted uh, statistics before, I think it's been a year or something now. Um, and I've been posting about autism uh, awareness also, uh, posting what autism related subjects also. Um, but I wanted to say thank you. And then I wanted to let you guys know that um, it is very scary and true. And it is hard to believe, but it is true in our community in the diaspora, the Habesha community in the diaspora just the East African uh, community in general, um, would have been hit by autism like no other communities. Uh, Leah Siyum, um, Tesfai, and myself and other moms have been sounding the alarm because of this. Um, I mean, myself, including the connection with uh, uh, vaccination. Um, but for me as a mental health professional and as an autism parent myself, I was very shocked to find out that you know, the prevalence of the autism um, in the Habesha population, which is why I created the um, Facebook group, Our Family Life with Autism and Developmental uh, Delays. And then I also created, um, so that's a Facebook group. And also, um, it's just, it is, it's, it's a lot. Um, my, since starting to work with the Habesha community, with the Habesha population, I realize how prevalent it is. I mean, it is even more than this because these are just the ones that have been diagnosed and we know for sure that not a lot of parents are uh, seeking treatment or seeking, um, you know, going to their doctor and talking about it. So um, let's, let's make sure we educate ourselves. I also have a YouTube channel that that um, I think it's been two years now that um, create uh, awareness about mental health, but sp especially um, autism awareness and developmental delays and to green on some English. Um, I do Facebook lives, um, also the same thing in mental health and autism. So I would literally advise you guys to join our groups. Leah also have a group um, of East African population. Uh, so I would advise you guys, if you're concerned, if you want to learn, make sure you join these groups. We, uh, we, we have already been hit, right? We are, our mindset is now, we've accepted it. We've accepted that and we're seeking treatment for our children and we're also helping other parents to do that. So Please, for additional information about autism and other developmental delays, also in Tigrinyan English, you can also go to adhanet.com and find additional information. I also provide parent-child uh, consultation about autism and developmental delays and any other um, mental health um, diagnoses. I also run bi-weekly Habesha support group for uh, via Zoom. This is for parents. Um, who are concerned or who are already, or their children have been diagnosed already. So we have, I also have a, a WhatsApp group for those who meet with me one-on-one -on -one and also we have, uh, so we have continued support for those who are in need, for those who are seeking the treatment because it is not easy thing. It is not even when you find, you know, when you get the diagnosis, um, it is hard. So it, it, it literally takes a village. When they say it takes a village, yes, it does take a village and more to, 
to help our kids uh, with special needs. So I would definitely advise you guys to join a, tr a tribe, to find your tribe. We have, now we have two groups. Mostly mine is, um, our family life with autism, mine is mostly English and Tigrinya, because I don't speak Amharic, but we do have uh, uh, families who speak Amharic and they do uh, share there when they find resources and other things that they think is helpful. As myself, I don't speak Amharic, so I just do my part in English and uh, mostly English and Tigrinya. Um, you know, big latte, uh, whatever I can do. So what I wanted to say is, you know, we definitely advise the Habesha parents, you know, to look at this uh, free uh, plan, vaccine plan. It's a PDF by Dr. Paul Thomas. Um, and it will provide you free vaccine plan for your kids. This is for pregnant women, for those who just gave birth, um, into like uh, adulthood, you know, college age. So this, I would definitely share this, by the way, all the information I'll be sharing here. So make sure you look at it and talk to your doctor about that. So, because it's very important. Early intervention is definitely, definitely, definitely the key. Without early intervention, I would not, my family would not be where they are, where we are right now. My daughter definitely would, would not be where she is right now. Um, my daughter got diagnosed uh, about three months before her uh, third birthday. Uh, and this is due to an, an availability of a, a child psychiatrist specialist to diagnose it because it is, it's getting, you know, very, uh, they're getting very busy and there's not a lot of them. So you are on a wait list for a long time. But when I found out just a few months after her one year um, birthday, she got the MMR shot, shot. And when I found out that she was declining her developmental, um, you know, in her developmental stages, she was declining instead of, uh, you know, showing improvement or showing uh, progress. Um, I made sure to talk to her pediatrician, which sometimes they might tell you, oh, they're too early, which that's what happened to me. No, this is too early. She's so young. And But for me, I think what I always thank God is that because I was working with um, kids who are diagnosed with autism and other, you know, neurological disorders and other um, just mental health um, needs, I was able to see the signs of autism really, really, really early um, to the point that I was, even for myself, it was hard and uh, saying, maybe I, I'm spending too much time with, you know, the kids with autism, maybe that's why, but, um, but even by the time I decided to tell my parents the same thing that my family the same thing they said um she's just too young or she's because they're pregnant because this you know and have a shock community yes we make we make uh, uh excuses for everything it's because you're pregnant it's because of this and that or uh so and so's child did not start talking until the age of six or five whatever the only thing that i did for me uh is that even when the pediatrician said it was too early I said you know what I'm gonna go ahead and seek early intervention I would not have known about this if I have not worked if I have not referred other kids to them before right and this is for kids before the age of three so about before a, a year and a half um, she started receiving early intervention and she did that until age three, and that's when it stops, then they continue the IEP or other um, 504 plans at school. But early intervention is the key. It is the key, because when you do that, um, you are more aware and you have other professionals involved and you get more information and you plan. It's just, we have to seek early intervention. It is, do not wait. Please do not wait. Do not wait. You know? Um, 
another thing I wanted to say is, you know, my daughter Grace, our daughter Grace has proved that early intervention alternative treatment works. Before our own um, autism journey, I was a person who would tell you that if it's not, uh, you know, if it's not uh, evidence based, I'm not even, you know, I'm not even going to give it a chance. I'm not even going to spend my time, waste my time looking at it. Right? I was all about evidence based, what was uh, covered by insurance and all that stuff. Um, and I used to work for insurance, so this was kind of like drilled uh, in me. So, but everything changed when, you know, evidence based was not making a difference in my daughter, right? Then I started looking elsewhere. Then I started thinking of, as a mom, wait, I started thinking outside the box, started looking outside the box, doing my own research, talking to parents, what are parents saying? Because I know parents would not lie. Parents would not lie and tell you, oh, my child got better or something just to make their, you know, to make their um, whatever treatment sound better or whatever, you know. So that's when I started doing that. I started looking at alternative treatments non-medication, my non-psychotrophic medication. Um, so thank God, by his grace, our daughter is now verbal, you know, sassy and a future leader. And I say the future leader because this girl has gone from non-verbal, aloof, isolated to the most social uh, kid, the most friendly. I mean, telling kids, you know, this is not nice thing to say, or this is bullying behavior, or just advocating for herself and her uh, peers. And this, so I say God, you know, with God, all things are possible. But I also say that God helps those who help themselves. Our Habisha community, they have to wake up. We have to wake up as a Havisha community and educate ourselves. We have to listen to those who are uh, whistling, to those who are uh, sounding the alarm. You know, I always say, um, you know, my daughter, I've been working so hard. My husband and I have been working so hard uh, to get where we are, to get her where we are. From where we have started, we are thankful every day for, for the progress she's made. What I have learned is um, that our culture is very, very strong. Sometimes even those educated, and I say this because I work a lot with the Habesha community. You know, um, it just, even if those who educated, the culture seems to be like uh, the one that's <laughs> very uh, strong, like in the mindset. So sometimes I have to do a lot of, uh, teaching psychoeducation to get the person to see in a different way right so i ask you you know you ask and you shall receive right if we don't ask god did not say stay in denial and i'll just do everything for you right so please wake up sisters wake up for our children we gotta wake up if it does not seem right, if we have something in our inside saying, oh, my child does not seem right, right? We have to make an action. We have to take an action. Please do not listen to another mom who says, you know what, don't worry. You know, like, don't worry. My child did not speak until the age of three, the age of five. You know, I, I hear this a lot from the Habesha you know, from the Habesha uh, parents that I speak to. And I, the same thing in my family too, you know. My husband, my mom, everybody was saying, you know what, don't worry, it's because you're pregnant, because of this. She's so cute, but she's so nice. She said this. It has nothing to do with that, right? If you have a feeling that something is not right, your instinct, follow your instinct and ask for help, ask for assistance, right? Because there's no way, they're not gonna tell you your child, first of all, they're not gonna cause autism. They're not going to check your child and cause autism. That's not how it works, right? Sometimes our, our uh, mind kind of tricks us to think that way maybe. Again, um, they're not gonna tell you your child has autism when they, they don't. Why? Because it takes a lot for them to say, to, just to get that diagnosis just to get that diagnosis so they can get help. 
there's a lot of wait list. Again, there's a lot of tests that you have to do, hearing tests, sometimes I, you know, sight tests, whatever, sometimes there's a neurological test, and depending where you are, where you are in the country or if you're in Europe. I talk to a lot of parents in Europe, um, and I hear it's very different their method of doing things are very different. And um, we have so many children who are undiagnosed um, till the age of five, six. I mean, so many of them, right? And with no treatment, as I always say, the mind, our mind is like, it's like a elasticity, right? It gets harder. The more time you give time, the more, with age, it gets harder. But if we can get them early, the mind is flexible, like we can mold it, right? We can mold it and shape it. We can challenge the mind, whether it's with nutrition, with uh, behavioral uh, treatments, with um, just different things, supplements. So please, please don't listen to the mom who says, just to make you feel better, who says, oh, don't worry, because my child did not speak until the age of five. You know what, because of that, because of that, we have lots of Habesha children who are six, seven, nine, twelve. Not even, they're not verbal, not even pre-verbal. Right? I say this to you because I'm talking to these parents. And they always tell me, well, I thought like this. I didn't know anything about autism because my family said this or my friend this. We have to take responsibility, mothers. We have to take responsibility for our, make sure you, you listen to your gut instinct, right? We have to stop this mindset of, oh, because, st uh, you know, so-and-so child did not speak, so my child must be like that. I myself will continue to sound the alarm because our children are the future and we are a big part of the future. So please, we have a choice to be part of the problem or part of the solution. So let's be part of the solution for our kids. And it starts with early intervention. It starts with early intervention, right? So please, I ask you, do it for your child. Get them checked and take action. Take action. If they tell you something is not right, if they give you a diagnosis, take action. Don't say, oh, I do, you know, them white people. Blah, blah, blah. Don't say that. Take action. It's never early to get screened, right? It's never late to start treatment. So please, I ask you guys to do this for our kids. You know, I'm so blessed where my family is right now. I'm blessed where my child is right now. We were in darkness and now we are in, um, you know, where we are, sorry, my points ringing. You know, where we are right now, we are blessed. We are blessed and thankful for everything. And I just want, you know, that chance for you guys, meaning we have a lot of family, um, we have a lot of families, not only one child. We have twins with autism. We have two, three parents with two, three kids who have autism. So we need to wake up, right? We need to wake up and share what we have learned. All right, blessings to you all and healthy family to you all. all right, thanks. Bye. And if you guys have any questions, please. Uh, let me know. Go to the best thing to do is to go to my website at hanet.com and seek for, you know, just read the English or to or whatever um, is easy for you. You can contact me through that. Please don't do Facebook messages because I'm always busy. I have a lot of uh, people messaging me, whether it's, you know, relevant or not. So I don't have the time to uh, check that. So you can go. I also have a Facebook page, um, you know, uh, I, I also have a Facebook page at Hannah Zerabruch or AZ Holistic Healing Transformations. So you can go to that and uh, message me also. So again, all right, blessings to you all. Bye.